What's up guys, welcome to Among the Fins. I am your host Aaron, and if it's your first time seeing one of my videos, I'd like to welcome you to my channel where I do reviews on albums and EPs and singles and we could just hang out and talk about music. And on today's review, we're going to be checking out the new EP, Post-Human Survival Horror, by the band Bring Me the Horizon. Bring Me the Horizon is a electronic rock, alt-metal, metalcore kind of band thing from the UK. They start about 2004 and they have six studio albums. And post-human survival horror is technically considered to be an EP, even though it's basically like album length. It's nine songs and I think like 35, 36 minutes or something like that. But it is considered an EP. And I did do a review on Obey, which... I wasn't really all that thrilled about it, if I'm going to be completely honest. It wasn't, it didn't turn me off as much as some of their older stuff that they put out, especially some of the songs off of Ammo, which I wasn't really all that thrilled about. But it wasn't the worst Bring Me The Horizon song I ever heard. And because of that, I wasn't really looking forward to reviewing this EP. I wasn't even going to do it, just because I try and stay away from things that I already have a strong opinion about but there is a lot of people who don't like this album that are giving it a lot of praise especially a lot of my friends on Facebook and different groups and even Fantano said this album was great and I'm just I, I just couldn't put it off anymore so I decided to give it a listen and if there was something worth mentioning I guess I'd make a video on it and here I am and one of the things that did influence my judgment on this album going into it and actually did pique my interest a little bit more is the theme of the album is based on like kind of like a video game kind of genre thing or at least it's styled around video game music like Resident Evil, Silent Hill, uh, Parasite Eve is even one of the names of the songs which is taken directly from the game of the same name and it definitely has a video game feel to it. It's a lot of even like video game that have been turned into movies it sounds like this could be ripped right off of the soundtrack from it the first song on the album dear diary takes allusions from resident evil especially the name which comes from a name of a diary called keeper's diary which is found in the video game and the music feels like it's taken straight out of the resident evil movie or maybe it belongs in a rave but they also seem to integrate some modern references into it concerning a virus that's going around today there's a lot of that, and it does feel a little bit more modern sounding, I suppose, because in terms of a video game movie soundtrack, a lot of those times, like, those soundtracks are cool, you know, but it fits mostly in the movie. Once you take it out, it's just kind of whatever, and the bridge goes freaking hard, and this song is actually a lot of fun. I, honestly, when it comes to Bring Me the Horizon, I always have high hopes, and I, I gotta admit, about 90% of the time, I'm let down, but this first song, Dear Diary, it, it got me. I was enjoying this one. The next song, Parasite Eve, was actually released before the pandemic, but it, strangely enough, has a lot of references to what's going on in the world currently now. And like I said, it's named after the video game Parasite Eve, which came out in 1998, I believe. I played that video game, but I do not remember it at all and the song is basically about facing the end of the world and just all the craziness that's going on right now and it starts out with some Bulgarian vocals and lyrics which I feel like it was an attempt at epicness it was trying to have a good build-up and it just it just didn't do it for me it was just kind of I don't know I, I I feel like I was able to see through the the try hard attempt at the epicness I just wasn't really feeling it all that much uh, the pre-chorus has Alyssa Stoles, I believe that's how you say her name, and it has a very video gamey feel to it as well. It has like this computer override thing that's telling you like everything's gonna go wrong, like in Resident Evil when you know stuff starts hit the fan and little uh, holographic or hologram girl shows up and she tells you you know you're all gonna die down here. It has that feel to it and it works very very well i enjoyed the hell out of that and then when the pre-chorus comes back again it has ollie sykes the main vocalist in it and it just builds up just so much more epicness i believe that worked a lot more that was it, it was so dope and the chorus also fell flat for me it was a little too simple and predictable i want to say it was repetitive but it really wasn't. It just, I was kind of over it halfway through. It 
just it was kind of lame. Uh, the breakdown is solid. It again is very predictable, kind of generic sounding, but the end of it is pretty sick. How it flows really well into a synth beat. I enjoyed the song too, but it just had 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 a little nuances throughout it that I didn't really enjoy. For instance, like the chorus just wasn't really there. Um, sometimes the lyrics were just a little off. They were a little cheesy in a way. The song Teardrops explores the themes of being addicted to technology and like your phone and Facebook and all that. And it talks about the depression and the anxiety that come with it. But it does it in a different way than what's commonly done in songs where a lot of bands will talk about how the world's falling apart. We're all just mind the zombies. And instead, Ollie is expressing his sadness and his concern for these people who this addiction have been inflicted by anxiety and depression because from all these different addictions of technology and you get a lot of self image issues you get a lot of insecurity and you get social anxiety stuff from it and it is actually very sad and i did enjoy this song too the lyrics in it are phenomenal and it has a classic bring me the horizon sound but when I say classic, I'm not referring back to like their 2004 days where they were like deathcore and super heavy. It's more of like classic as in what you could expect to hear from Bring Me the Horizon currently. Uh, like I said, the lyrics are phenomenal and they're, man they manage to be catchy and have good hooks and still stay original. They're very simple. They do sound familiar. But at the same time, I mean, like I said, it's original. The bridge and the breakdown are also freaking killer now i already did a song on obey which is basically about you know just being puppets to the government and i wasn't like i said really all the end of that song i think i rated it like a 3.2 out of 5 but after listening to it a few more times especially in the context of this whole ep you know it grew on me it was very repetitive <laughs> And I didn't really enjoy all, like, it, it didn't grow on me all that much. I'd probably rate it like a 3.7 now. Itch for the Cure is a direct reference to the Linkin Park song of the same name. And this is an interlude song, which I'm not really that into usually. Normally interludes are just, they're kind of a waste of time from what I feel. I feel like they don't add anything to the theme of songs or any substance at all. But It's For The Cure actually, it, it served a purpose. It worked out really well in the theme of the whole album. And it does a good job getting you hyped up for the next song, which is Kingslayer. The intro to Kingslayer has this Mortal Kombat kind of-esque thing going on. And the name of it comes from a medal you get in Call of Duty when you end up killing the top player on the other team. It's a Kingslayer medal that you receive, which I thought was also pretty cool. Uh, I gotta admit that... This song features baby metal, which I am not a fan of. I've listened to a few of their songs here and there. And baby metal is a Japanese metalcore band with female vocalists. And I believe all the everybody in the band, I believe, is female. And so the vocals are very high pitched and it's very gimmicky, which I'm not really all that into. And I do enjoy the verses where it's mixed with uh, there's clean vocals and every once in a while distorted vocals interrupt it but then once we got to the chorus where i believe her name is sue metal i believe that's like her nickname or her stage name or whatever when the chorus hits man it's so good <laughs> i wanted to hate this song so much i did not want to like it specifically because of baby metal i i i did not want to like it and I've listened to it once and I was just like, yeah, it's okay. But then when I sat down to review it and I listened to it multiple times, I put headphones on, oh, it hits so hard. And then when it comes back in and she is singing in Japanese, it's just so much better. This song has everything that I really expected from like a video game themed album thing, especially like it has like this anime feel to it as well which I'm a huge sucker for. I don't know, this song hits hard. It's incredible. The vocals are insane, especially when you put headphones on and you can really hear uh, Sue Metal's vocals in your headphones and Ollie Sykes growls and it, you could just hear the little nuances and just the way how it was mixed in. It's so good. Song 1x1 or 1x1 is a more pop-orientated song and it's about the guilt that 
we all feel or we should at least feel about humans killing off other species of animals or even just killing other humans over religion, ethnical stuff, or even sexuality preferences. And the lyrics are well written. I just... This is the Bring Me the Horizon sound that I don't like. This is like what they reverted to. That I just... I wasn't really into it. Like I, I enjoyed the hooks. It's catchy. Uh, Amy Love's feature in it was okay. Uh, for some reason, I wasn't really that into her voice. But the duet between her and Ollie towards the end of the song is definitely worth hearing. This song just felt a lot more bland. And it just... Yeah, it wasn't nearly exciting. The song Ludens is the EP's leading single. And Luden is... I believe the mascot or the icon of Kojima's production company. And the song touches on some environmental issues. And it was actually made for the game Death Standing. And again, this is also kind of the sound that I don't like that Bring Me the Horizon has evolved into. It's got predictable musical writing. It's very mainstream sounding musically, but it does have different things I enjoyed. I enjoyed the distorted vocals and the growls. I enjoyed it when it did bring the heaviness. And I kind of give it a pass on being mainstream and having a more Bring Me the Horizon generic feel to it because it is made for a video game. It's made for a bigger, wider uh, I audience to accept it as opposed to a more niche down audience. The closing song on the album, One Day the Only Butterflies Left Will Be in Your Chest As You March Toward Your Death. I tried to read that so many times without actually having to read it, and it just wasn't working. This song features Amy Lee from Evanescence, and her vocals are so freaking beautiful in this song. This song, she makes it so much. I believe this song is about death. Yeah, I, I'm, that's what I'm assuming from the lyrics. And while it's creepy, her vocals also make it kind of comforting at the same time, which I guess is actually it makes it a little bit creepier in that sense. And Ollie Sykes, he also matches her vocals flawlessly in terms of just execution and performance. And speaking of performance, this does feel very theatrical and ballady. It's very fantastic. But one of my favorite things about this song is this song is actually a product of a lawsuit. Evanescence soon bring me the horizon over a song that sounded very similar to one of theirs. And they ended up winning, I believe, like royalty rights or I don't know. They ended up winning some money from sales or something like that. But at the end of it, Amy Lee was like, dang, I actually like Bring Me the Horizons music. I, I like I like these guys a lot. And even though there was some dispute and they had an argument and there's a court and all this stuff, they still were able to become friends out of it. And this might actually be. It's not my favorite song on the album, but it's a it's a killer song. It's so good. So one thing about this EP that a lot of people were saying in Facebook groups, I'm part of a metalcore, deathcore group in the August Burns Red group. A lot of people were hyping this album up as Bring Me the Horizons, bringing back. They're heavy. They're heavy again. We're all excited because they're heavy and you guys got to listen to it. They're heavy. They're, you're going to fall in love with it. It's not true. It, they are nothing like how they used to be. They're, they're still very much current Bring Me the Horizon in terms of their core sound. Sure, they do have heavier riffs. They have solid breakdowns here and there, more distorted vocals, which it all sounds good and it kicks ass and it works so well. But that's basically it. They just found a way to mesh their electronic rock sound with more metalcore and heavy breakdowns and just more metal music. That's basically all they did. And to me, this is the best version of themselves. This is the best that they've done in terms of mixing the two genres together. I had a hard time thinking of what I wanted to rank this on because it is a longer album. There's a lot more content in this than what you would find in a normal five song EP that's only like maybe 15 minutes long as opposed to a 35 minute nine song EP that this is. I wanted to rank it on a 0 to 10 scale, to be honest, but I want to try and keep it consistent. My 0 to 5 scale for all EPs. So with all that said, I got to give Post-Human Survival Horror by Bring Me the Horizon a 4.7 out of 5. And if I was going to rate this on a 10 scale, basically just times it by 2. 
it'd be like a 9.4, 9.5, somewhere around there. I enjoyed the hell out of this album. Sure, it has its flaws. It isn't for everybody. But if you go into it knowing what Bring Me the Horizon sounds like, and if you are more into heavier metal music that, I mean, there is a gimmick to this because it is video game themed. I believe that you might enjoy this album. And I want to know what you guys think. If you've listened to post-human survival horror, let me know what you thought. Let me know what you would rate it. If you haven't, listened to a couple songs. And yeah, let me know what you think. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like. If you want to see more of my stuff, please feel free to subscribe and click the little bell icon. That way you don't miss out on any of my future uploads. I noticed recently that like only 50% or so of my views come from people who are subscribed. So, I mean, if you're someone who continually visits my channel and you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. It helps me out tremendously, builds up my self-esteem, and it helps you out because then you don't have to look for my channel. It's just right there in your subscription box. And if you click the bell icon, then you get notified and you, you just don't miss out. It helps me to help you to help me and we're helping each other here. And with that said, I hope you guys all have a good rest of your day. Hope you're staying safe, enjoying your life. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it more than you could ever imagine. And I will talk to you guys next time. I was shot